Um, dis distribution's tricky. So no, I mean, uh, distributors don't want to take you on until they know that you're going to make money for them, that right. you're going to sell product. And Makes sense. So, you know, it was a lot of hustling. And I, I feel like you have to swallow your pride a little bit if you're anybody, you know, doing that game. Because you do. You have to get out and sell yourself in to these retailers. And why do they want to take a chance on you? And in the beverage business especially, there's a million Bloody Mary mixes. There's a million margarita. They're, why are you different? Hey, they come in and meet man. Y'all don't see me eat man. Hey, don't they meet man. Y'all don't see me eat man. I got jaws like a bear, trap a teeth like a razor. I made tack tongue with a sensitive taster. I was born out in Texas called the land of beef. Never catch a muscle green or showing the hell that like a meat on the meat man. Y'all ought to see me eat man. I'm here at Style Switch. Catherine Styles, Hi. the barbecue wife. How's your day going? It's going good. And uh, you said you were out delivering some products to some special events today? Yes, we've got this uh, magical thing that comes through Austin for 10 days every year called South by Southwest. And um, I get asked to do a lot of events with the Bloody Mary mix and the margarita mix. So the ones we are doing, I'm actually out hand delivering. So part of the job. Special kind of fun, that South by Southwest. It is a special kind of fun. <laughs> so for people that don't live in Austin or have not experienced it, how would you describe it from your perspective? It's all hell breaks loose for 10 <laughs> days is basically what it is. It's, yeah, hurry up and keep up. Um, yeah, you kind of you power through it, and it's, it's over before you know it. But it's, uh, it's a really neat thing that descends upon Austin. There's so many different industries and people and worlds colliding all at the same time so there's a lot of opportunity for businesses um, especially being in Austin as a spotlight I mean all over the world for that week um, but yeah it's a lot of fun it's a lot of work but we have a good time yeah I feel like everyone's got kind of their own little hustle around it you know yeah. you, you've got your business there's barbecue guys doing different caterings mm -hmm. you know there's people who have been catering the same party for 20 years yes and it's it's crazy to see the whole city change for 10 days you know it's split up it, it we get kind of a warm-up now because there's film and interactive and there's kind of just nerdy nice people mm -hmm. but then music descends upon the city and everything just turns to chaos and yes. i'm actually leaving that saturday morning to go to houston to get I out of here yeah the music is a different is definitely it's funny being in the restaurant business and you can kind of see the uh the crowds change as the segments change so we kick it off with you know edu which is even before the real interactive and that portion starts but you see a lot of the corporate people coming oh, yeah. through and then you can kind of see as the film and the music changes and the crowds change and you know this year's a little bit different because spring break uh for austin is actually not coinciding with the for the, ut yeah for ut and for austin aisd so oh, really? traditionally um i have two little girls so usually our spring break collides with south by southwest which is hard for us because we're working and trying to see what we yeah. can do for spring break which isn't a lot um this year it actually falls the week after so It'll be so you're more, like 14 days of fun. I am. I'm going to Disneyland on spring break. So really? yeah, that'll be okay. well, so <laughs> fun break. You get to go vacation. I right do after. for the first time. I get to do a spring break with my girls. So I'm excited. That's the, that, that's your first one. Uh, yeah. Uh, like real spring break. Usually spring break consists of grandparents, like helping us out and, you know, shuffling them around and they're still little, so they really don't know what spring break is. So that's cool though, year. that you've created a business that's you can walk away from for a week and you know everything's good we'll see i don't know if we really can <laughs> yeah well this is a test <laughs> well do you think as a as a business owner and as someone who kind of creates their own brand that you are always just kind of going for it even on? even even on vacation yes um i would say 24 24 hours a day where yeah something is going on so i always laugh especially being in the craft barbecue business and what we do, there's 24 hours a day, six days a week, somebody manning the pits and something going on inside yeah. our, our brick and mortar location. So, you know, Shane can't turn his phone off at night. So it, you hear it, you know, beeping and things going on and yeah, it's a, it's a 24 hour a day business. So, but you know, I think we love what we do. So it, it doesn't feel like, you know, you're being um, bombarded all the time. It's just, it's part of what we do every day. And, Tell us a little history about kind of where you started. Was it something you wanted to do? 
with the barbecue business? Was it kind of your own idea or, or how did you kind of get here? Yeah. Um, so it's funny. It, it kind of came about in a couple different ways. So, uh, you know, when we opened Style Switch almost uh, a little over seven years ago, as we got down the road, um, looking at, you know, other ways of branding outside of the business, um, I was like, you know, barbecue sauce is a really hard product line to, to go after because it's such a oversaturated market. If you're getting it into retail, into grocery, really hard to make, you know, any money. A lot of people do it as a branding tool to be on that shelf. Um, but I always had a Bloody Mary mix recipe that I made for friends and family at home. And I started talking to Shane about it. I was like, wouldn't it be really interesting if I could play around with the barbecue sauce that we use? Because it's a mop sauce, what we call in Central Texas. So it's more like a almost Bloody Mary consistency. It's very uh, tomato-based, very thin, not overly sweet. Um, so for about a year and a half, I played around with my Bloody Mary mix and the barbecue sauce and kind of married them together. And at that point, I kind of was like, wow, this is a really interesting product. Um, and being a woman in barbecue, I started noticing more and more of these like amazing women that I meet in barbecue, but they weren't really at the forefront of the stories of barbecue. Um, traditionally, you know, family-owned restaurants, and they were kind of in the background. So I was like, wouldn't it be really interesting if I could create this female brand and give it a voice and still maintain this, this foot in barbecue and tell the story of both? So that's where we came up with the name Barbecue Wife. Um, I'm a barbecue wife, so I always try to tell that story and, and lead with, you know, I'm a woman in barbecue. There's so many other amazing women in barbecue. Let me tell you more about that. Um, and then I also have this great line of products that's all inspired by Texas craft barbecue. So we kind of take everything that we do in craft barbecue and take it over to a space in craft cocktail mis mixers that hasn't really been disrupted yet. Um, so that's kind of the whole thing around that. Well, and the the women in barbecue for maybe on the outwardly, you know, through social media, people just see a bunch of guys in the pits. Yeah. But there's a lot of women that work in pit rooms. Yes. Uh, your sausage maker at the switch. Yes. Is a very talented woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we've got Tootsie, who is just this Probably hardworking yes. machine. And most most well known. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, and and they're, you know. Jess Pryles and a bunch of other people. So I feel like the barbecue world, that women are landing really well in the barbecue world. There isn't a lot of pushback when Jess Pryles shows up and talks about meat, when you serve your drinks, when you have a new product. Like there's not a lot of like, oh, what's this lady doing here, you know? Yeah, no, not at all. I think it's a very inviting uh, community. I don't, I don't feel like that's part of the issue ever. Um, but it is very, very male-dominated as far as, you know, the spotlight's always on the pit master. Um, more predominantly, it's it's a male world in the pit room. So having the ability to shine the spotlight on some other women and things that they contribute to, you know, the family business or outside of the restaurant side of the barbecue world is a lot of fun. So we started doing that a couple years ago, doing this Tales of a Barbecue Wife, which I partnered with uh, Wyatt McSpadden, who's a really well-known Texas barbecue. I think barbecue. we're sitting under a lot of his yes, photos. Yes, photographer, and he's a, a dear friend of ours and... Um, I said, hey, you know, I'm one of the things that's hard with my schedule is I am a mom of two little girls, so I don't get to travel too much too often outside of Austin. Um, so Wyatt is always on the road, always traveling, and he works in barbecue, doing a lot of the photo shoots for Texas yeah. Monthly and his books. I said, can you be my eyes if there's some women that I want to interview and I can do the interview, you know, obviously over the phone or over email, if you could take their portrait and then we could marry those worlds together. So that's what we started doing. Um, and one of the first ones we did was um, with Evie Mays with Mallory. Mallory's awesome. Yes. And she was so sweet to do our first one out in Lubbock. And um, then we did Stacy Franklin here in Austin and just kind of keep them going down the road. So I try to pick a different city, a different angle every time and different perspective. Um, but what we do, we actually tell the interview from the point of um, who the person is. It's not all about barbecue. She's not going to talk about the barbecue right. business, but more about, let me tell you and introduce you to this person you might not know about. And why do you think that, I mean, obviously it's taking off. Do you feel like it's the story? Do you feel like people just want to hear more about the people in barbecue? or? I think both. I mean, people are just intrigued by the barbecue um, business as a whole. So I think that it's interesting to open one more door into uh, that world, into, you know, maybe your fi favorite barbecue joint you didn't know 
this piece of that that story so that's really fun to tell and then I think there's you know um, just women in general, women in business, and, and how do people juggle it all? You know, I get that question asked all the time. It's like, you're a mom, you have restaurants, and now you've started this side business. How do you manage to juggle all of that? And I, I find that I get a lot of emails from other women that are what, like, wow, that's really inspiring that you've found a way to make this all work and kind of set the limits and the boundaries on how you're going to make it happen. Well, in, in the, the story, I think... Uh, I got really inspired as I was creating the show to say, people would say, oh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes interviews, that's all people want. Yeah. And that was all kind of, now I realize, just kind of BS statistics and people trying to hack the system. Yes. And now after talking to everyone who listens, people want to hear the story. They'll listen for two hours if it's a good story. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, there's so many great stories to tell and from all walks of life. And um, I've had a lot of fun with that piece is, is introducing people to other people that they might not have known in this whole barbecue journey that, that I've been in. So yeah, I've been, uh, I've been planning some events to throw for just barbecue industry people. Cause I realized that a lot of people don't get to really meet each other. Yeah, that's, that's a hard thing. You know, for us, um, we're closed on Mondays. That's our one day that the, the restaurants actually closed, but traditionally that's one of the busier days of the week for us, right. as far as catching up on the computer, getting orders in, doing all of those things. But you're closed on Mondays. We're closed, meaning that, yeah, we cannot be here, but yeah, we're, we're working seven days a week. It seems like most of the time. Well, and with two kids, it's a challenge. It is. You have to, like I said, you have to know your boundaries, and it's taken me. I'm 41. I've had some big careers in my past, and I think I've finally, at this point in my life, learned how to set boundaries and say no. And, you know, at 5 o'clock, I cut off, you know, 90% of the time, and nice. I'm not on social media, and I'm not, you know, answering emails and being present with my family and trying to pay attention to those needs. How many requests do you think you got for South By that you had to say no to? Oh, at least 10, 15 that I say no to every year. I, I traditionally do the same same ones that I've done over the last, I would say, three or four years. I do Rachel Ray's party. She invites me to come in and awesome. do the Feedback House, which is the, the private lounge that she I've hosts. heard about it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And they have, you know, most of the Food Network people come in and... And I've made some really great connections there. Um, I'm doing the Gibson Guitar Private Lounge this nice. year for 10 days, which is a good one. Um, and then I do a lot with Yeti. Um, they've been really great to me in, in helping to further yeah, my... Yeah, Leanne's got a cool job. Yeah, she does. She does. And, and they're really great about supporting local and trying to connect the dots with um, things that work with their brand as well. So. Well, and almost everything you just mentioned was all women-based, too. It is. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I try to, I try to stay in that space. And then um, I'm doing a mentorship through South by Southwest. They reached out to me last year about coming down and doing a mentorship. So people sign up for time slots to come and actually pick my brain. And I give them a bunch of random information and facts <laughs> that are stored in my head. So hopefully it's helpful. Well, and I've, I've been to events like that. And don't you feel like sometimes people, you're just sitting there and you're like, you don't even know which questions to ask. Like, yeah, I, I feel like you have to you have to know what questions to ask them. Just you know, it's like talking to children. You know, if you ask the right questions, you can get them to talk, and then they might realize like, oh, yes, I need to know more about that. So, um, I, I love doing that. You know, in the past, I've had some pretty big careers. My career started in PR and media in the radio industry. So. I did that for 10 years before uh, getting into health food. I was part of a health food startup um, and then getting into barbecue. So I have all this knowledge base with these careers that I've kind of carried over as I've done other things in my life. So Was that radio in Austin? Or? Radio in Houston. So um, right out of college, I worked in radio for 10 years. I was with CBS, and then I was with iHeartMedia, which was Clear oh, Channel cool. at the time. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a fun journey and path that I've been on and been able to kind of weave all these careers and past knowledge into what I do now. So, And did you, were you producing or what were you doing no, at the radio station? No, I was station? on the event marketing side. So, you know, large scale music events and all okay, that. Okay, so you were throwing here. parties. Yeah, we were throwing a lot of parties. Okay, so that, that all makes <laughs> sense. Because you guys throw a great party yeah. here too. We're in your banquet room. Yes, we do. Style Switch. It's yeah. beautiful. Yes, and I turn into a concert promoter for one week of a year. We have a big music showcase that we do. This is our fifth year running at Style Switch. So next week on Wednesday, we have five days, 45 bands that come through here in five days. They play in here or where? They play outside. So we do oh, um, right. the patio outside. area. 
we kick off the music at noon every day and it goes through closing so it's a free showcase and it's it's grown into this really huge thing so we've we get people that come just from you know the neighborhood area here in Brentwood that come from downtown that are in town so we've had you know Quest Love came a couple of years ago. That's We've awesome. had Dave Grohl. Um, he loves barbecue. Yeah, he's been in here quite a bit. Um, and have then, you have you seen what he's been doing in barbecue? Yes, I have. Yeah, we've been following. He's a huge barbecue fan. So yeah, I, I ran into him maybe a dozen times at Memphis in May. It was crazy. Yeah, and every every shop he went to. They'd give him a shirt, so uh-huh. he was wearing like you know, All say like barbecue. Corey or Steve or whatever. <laughs> he's a very kind man. He's so awesome. He's very cool. And, and he was stuffing his face everywhere. I saw was like he? he couldn't get enough. <laughs> it was great. But yeah, we get some fun. You know, that's part of the magic of being in Austin. You know, everybody talks about all the wonderful things that happen in Austin, but it really is a magical place for for weeks like South by that happen. Well, don't you feel like it? The city, like everyone's afraid to leave their house because they know that downtown there's this madness. So if there's something, if it's a walk, if it's a short drive, people are more likely, they want to get out of the house, but they don't necessarily want to dive into the pandemonium. So it's a great alternative for people like, well, I want to go see some music. Oh, Style Switch has great music. And those musicians are in town, so they're totally down to do big stuff, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, no, and we've had lots of guest musicians that have popped up around and, and hopped up on stage with people, and it turns into this fun little scene. So, yeah, and we've made it free, so we say, you know, if you want to bring kids by, it's fine, you yeah. know, and hang out, eat some barbecue. Well, unfortunately, South by Southwest has decided to kind of crack down on these unofficial events. Yes. So that's kind of ruined a lot of this stuff, but luckily you guys are – not official or unofficial. You're just yeah, doing your we're own just, thing. Yeah, we do our own thing. So we, we kind of are off the beaten path. And it's been really fun for us to be able to give, the, you know, something fun back to the community around Brentwood and this area, Crestview, Allendale, um, that really love to come out and enjoy it and kind of made like a big festival out of it. Do you have some regulars or people you've known since the beginning that are here all the time oh, in the neighborhood? Oh, yeah. I mean, every every week we've had some of the same people that have, you know, stopped in and, and eating with us and bring the family and bring friends in. So, yeah, it's it's a crazy little place. And it, it's funny, you know, with me doing um, Barbecue Wife, you know, I'm in about four, almost 500 retail stores in Texas. So a lot of times I'm out doing demos in, in different stores, which a demo is basically a sampling event yeah. or a meet and greet that you go out to a store. But yours are a little cooler than just like that little table people set up. I try to make them a little more cooler. Um, but yeah, it's fun to go in and actually talk to people. I love talking to people and meeting people. And one of the fun things about my product line is, you know, people are like, barbecue wife, what is this barbecue sauce? And I'm like, no, let me tell you, you know, my husband and I own Style Switch Barbecue here in Austin. And they're like, what? I've never heard of this. What are you talking about? So I always laugh with uh, my husband with Shane and say, you know, if this doesn't work out, I'm like your biggest marketer out there. So you're getting something out of it. <laughs> well, and I think the last time I saw you uh, working was at Snows. Was that, that might've been a year ago. Oh yeah. We were up there for their one year anniversary. Yeah. They were really sweet. Carrie reached out and said, Hey, why don't you come up here and do uh, margaritas or bloody Marys? And well, yeah, and we you instantly turn Usually it's like this chill, you know, breezy country morning. It turned into a party as soon as <laughs> you showed up. It was great. It turns into a party when you bring vodka. It's funny how that works. <laughs> well, not only that, but there was music and, uh, you know, it was the anniversary. So people were excited, but it was just like, it was just cool to have, to have you there and to kind of, spice up the line a little bit because sometimes people are just sitting around and they all make friends but it was like everyone was best friends by the end of that yeah yeah well and I find too you know like you you have to interject yourself into uh, people when they're standing in those lines if you can go by I mean and say hello how are you doing and it it just it changes the energy it changes the mood and what all's going on so what was one of the first events you threw or when you first decided oh I'm going to make you know, Bloody Mary mix or margarita mix? um, Actually, the first one, which was, you know, I'm I'm always like, ah, I'm not sure if I want to do this back and forth when I first started doing the Bloody Mary. And um, I knew I came up with a really great product and a a really great package. Uh, My package design I thought was really unique. Um, So we rolled it out at actually Austin Food and Wine Festival. We've been doing that event with Style Switch for, you know, the last five years now, I guess. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So Shane and Lance were like, bring, bring your stuff out. We're putting, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. And Shane grabbed a box of it and put it, you know, up on our table at Style Switch. And immediately everybody was stopping and picking it up and asking questions. And I had a bunch of, you know, local media that stopped by and were like, what is this? So that was kind of the launch pad for Barbecue Wipe was Austin Food and Wine Fest. And now 
I'm out there every year hey, you on, got your own, on my time. own. Yeah. yeah. And it's a lot of fun. So we'll be back again in, in April. And now we have the margarita mix that we just launched um, at the end of last year. So we'll be out there doing margaritas one day with uh, tequila 512. And then I do nice. uh, Tito's and uh, Bloody Mary's on Sunday. So that's a lot of fun. So did you, you know, how, how long was it from, and you came up with this idea to, did you get the, did you kind of team up with Tito's first? Did you start distributing first? Um, dis- distribution's tricky. So no, I mean, uh, distributors don't want to take you on until they know that you're going to make money for them, that right. you're going to sell product. And Makes sense. So, you know, it was a lot of hustling and I, I feel like you have to swallow your pride a little bit if you're anybody, you know, doing that game. Because you do, you have to get out and sell yourself in to these retailers and why do they want to take a chance on you? And in the beverage business especially, there's a million Bloody Mary mixes, there's a million margarita. They're, why are you different? Why do but, we need to buy yours? But it's a small yours? section, so you really have to work it. it. It's hard to get that shelf space. And um, anybody ever going into, it's CPG is the industry, consumer packaged goods. If you're ever looking to go into that industry, I always say, please come talk to me first because I can tell you a lot of pitfalls to probably stay away from. But yeah, it's one thing to get get on that shelf the hard thing is to stay on the shelf and that's what I tell people like you can sell yourself in but if you're not turning bottles if you're not you know selling product you're coming off that shelf and they don't give you a second chance so um, one of the first uh, retailers bigger retail chains that I got into was actually locally owned twin liquors and they've been amazing to me and their headquarters is actually just down the street from style switch so one day I cold called them I was like I know I knew the buyer for my category And I go, you know what, I'm just going to go over there. So I literally walked into the corporate office, and I went to the receptionist desk, and nobody was there. So I rang the bell, and this gentleman comes out, and I was like, hi, I'm looking for so-and-so. And And he goes, well, that's me. And I go, whoa, that's amazing. What a coincidence. Yes. I go, I'm Catherine Stiles. I said, my husband and I own Style Switch over here. And he's like, yeah, we're in there all the time. And I said, well, I have this amazing Bloody Mary mix, and I feel like you need to have it in Twin Liquors. And... He goes, well, you know, we're not taking on any new products, and that's a really flooded category, and yada, 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 but I'll take it from you, and I'll give you some feedback. So he called me the next day. He goes, okay, we all tried it. We all love it. We want to bring you in. So just like that, and it was surely going, you know what? What the hell? What do I have to lose? I'm going to walk in there and see what happens, and somehow the stars align. So, you know, you have to have that humility factor, I think, in in doing anything you're doing in in that space, so... Uh, you go in hard, but be friendly when you do it. Yeah, you do. You just like, what do you have to lose at that point? I mean, you spent all this time and effort in making something. You might as well try to get it out there. And so from there, did you start teaming up with Tito's? Did they connect you with those guys? Or? Um, I kind of did that on my own. So I think my background being in, in marketing and PR and doing things, I, I understand the the value of partnerships and collaborations For sure. and synergy and and. I try to align myself with obviously very organically with products that I'm a fan of. Um, and being in Austin, we're in just this wonderful environment of, of makers and in the food space and the beverage space and just about every space. So there's also this really cool, you know, six degrees of separation is what I call it in Austin, where you can still pick up the phone like it's a small town Austin 20, 30 years ago yeah. and get a hold of the CEO of Whole Foods or whoever. and. Um, I use that, you know, a lot as I would call friends of friends that knew people and say, hey, let's let's try to do something. So, yeah, Tito's was one that uh, right out of the gate was really nice to me. And um, obviously some of these guys have much larger marketing budgets than I do. So a lot of times they'll bring me along and piggyback into like ACL Fest. They've been really nice every year to invite me to come out with Tito's and do their lounge, which, you know, that's like a twenty thousand dollar sponsorship I couldn't afford to do. Nice. Yeah. Well, and do you feel like I've noticed that everyone I've known, and I've been here for a decade and the people who are here before me even, everyone's kind of grown up with the city. So the person that you knew that was just doing events for something now has a barbecue spot, now has their own line. Like everyone's trying to keep up with the growth of Austin and the locals, it seems like, are creating their own brands rather than just working for someone, you know. South by an ACL is they're staffed almost entirely with different locals who, yes. if you know the right person, you know, they're one, they're one beer away from 
have yes, a conversation. Absolutely. And it's such a it's such an inviting and welcoming community too. So I, I feel like people genuinely want to help you and want to see you succeed. You rarely come across people that are, you know, not inviting in Austin. It's a great city. Well, and, and that kind of translates to the barbecue world too. There's really not a lot of bad blood floating around the barbecue world and everyone loves to see each other succeed. No, I think you see that inside families, but you don't see it cross lines of, you know, barbecue joint against exactly. barbecue joint. That's I think, you know, I always, it's funny because I work with a lot of different um, industries and do interviews with um, people outside of the barbecue world that are constantly asking me what's so magical about barbecue and I was like it's just such an amazing community that's so supportive I was like the best way to describe it is like the Texas football community like everybody has their favorite teams and their favorite maybe restaurants and pitmasters they rally around but they love the sport of barbecue you know as a whole so I think that's always something that's a lot of fun to see well and people are pretty happy when they get good food and they get good food, yeah. And people who work hard tend to just enjoy each other's. I, I, I mentioned this to a friend who he's just kind of been in a bad mood lately. And I said, you just need to like go to the gym or like yeah. go work. Get because out. Because when you're working hard, you don't have time to be mad about all this little stuff that people get mad about, you know? Yes, you I, can definitely get bogged down with the day-to-day of all your little worries. But yeah. But when you're working hard, you, you don't think about it because you, you got something else to get to and there's no time for anger or frustration between those two things. Absolutely. You're like, I got the kids. No, I got to, <laughs> you know, I, do you, do you reach a certain point with your product? So did it reach a point where now lots of people are trying to get at it or are you still kind of fighting to stay on the shelf? No, um, we are at a, a really a fun time right now where I am and uh, we're about to do some hiring um, because cool. it's kind of outgrown what I can do on a day to day basis by myself and with the people that do help me now. Awesome. Um, which is great. And that's a really awesome thing to be able to create jobs and, and do it in this space where I'm like, this is so fun. Are you sure this is a real job? I don't know, but yeah, I'll pay you to do it. Um, so that's been a lot of fun just to be able to kind of grow as a business. Um, but no, now we, you know, we did this really amazing contest last year with HEB. Um, we won, um, finalists in the request for the best contest. So nice. it's a really neat contest. And I always, I strongly encourage anyone in the food space, especially in Texas, if they have a product or an idea, they could be you know, just a little ways down the road, but if you feel like you've got something really special, submit it to the contest and see where it takes you. Because um, with us making the top 25 finalists, they had a little over 720 applicants wow. last year. So we made it to the top 25, which guaranteed us going into the stores. And now they've done this huge ad campaign around us that just launched uh, about a week ago. So if you go into most of the HEBs in Texas right now, you'll see see my face on the aisle, which is really weird. Yeah, but, I saw um, some uh, shots on your Instagram about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My kids think it's really neat. They're like, Mommy. Um, but yeah, it, they've been amazing to me. So with that, with, you know, the added, you know, exposure and advertising that they've given me, I'm getting a lot of people uh, doing outreach from outside of the state of Texas going, hey, we'd really like to carry your product. So they're all like growing pain problems that you have to figure out logistically you can handle. And um, Is it production or are there weird laws to cross state lines? Or? No, uh, mainly it's just a production and logistical standpoint. So doing what I do, like we were talking about earlier, getting on a shelf and staying on a shelf are two different things. So if I go outside of Texas, I need to make sure that I've got um, the marketing and demo teams in place, oh, having I a brand see. ambassador in a marketplace, because if I'm not telling that story, you know, why is somebody going to pick that up? And I don't have right. huge, you know, ad budgets to be advertising in all of these markets through TV, print, radio, traditional media. So I really have to rely on, you know, more of the organic approach to throwing getting parties. my throwing parties, getting my story out there through other avenues. So, um, but most of my customers, you know, those have been my advocates on the ground. So I get people, you know, all the time that reach out and say, hey, we took you to this party and, you know, introduced you to so-and-so. So it's interesting. Do they interesting. bring like a cardboard cutout? And yeah, I need, I need to send those out, don't I? Like the <laughs> st flat Stanley that they get in school. <laughs> Well, you need like a U for everyone to bring to the party. That would be fun. Like hold it with like a something that can hold a real yeah. bottle. <laughs> well, the barbecue wife brand has a much better social life than I do. I wish I could say that I drink vodka and martinis and margaritas every day, but I do not. <laughs> do you see, you know, you're creating jobs, you're, you're building this huge brand. Do you see 
yourself and some of these people and some of these ambassadors and the people you see the next, you know, uh, maybe they'll create their own thing. Maybe they'll just grow huge with what you're doing, but in their own way. Yeah, I do. You know, I, like I said earlier with the mentorship that I'm doing for South by, I really get a lot of joy in, in teaching and, yeah. and sharing knowledge and information. And if I can help people to, you know, get to a place that they're trying to get to, that's something that I take a lot of pride in. So, um, yeah, I, I always try to employ people that are interested in the space that I'm in, whether it be barbecue, whether it be, you know, the beverage space or just entrepreneurship, being a woman in business in general and, and try to, you know, educate and pay it forward as much as I can. 